All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? How is it going? I am Is There No One Else, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about the item set that needs the biggest adjustment, Nocturnal's Ploy. I've already talked about this set and how I think it's overtuned, uh, broken, and how it should be removed from the game on a more general level. Uh, but after testing it and running some numbers, I wanted to do a deeper dive into how the set works, why it's so effective, and why it should not make it to the live game. Let's dive into it. First things first, let's explain what the set is. The five pieces as follows. When you apply a major debuff to an enemy, remove a major buff with a duration from the target. When you apply a minor debuff to an enemy, remove a minor buff with a duration from the target. These effects can both occur once every two seconds. So for every two seconds, when you apply a major fracture, as an example to an enemy, or major defile, or, or whatever, you also remove one of their buffs. Why is this so problematic? Well, let's break it down. The Elder Scrolls Online already has a buff and debuff system. So for your major and minor resolve, there's major and minor force. Ma sorry, major and minor fracture. For your major mending, there's major defile. For your major courage, there's major cowardice. For your major heroism, well, I can block and you have cast times on your ultimate. So it all evens out. See, we have we have synergy here. <laughs> sorry, that was a, that was a joke. Um, Anyway, <laughs> the point is that there's already a buff and debuff system in this game. Players have management over their own buffs and debuffs. You can buff yourself with skills and abilities that benefit you, while also debuffing your enemy to provide powerful effects to them. Uh, the game functions in that we have ownership over our own buffs and debuffs. Sure, your opponent can cleanse a debuff, but you can still choose to reapply it. Now, this set, what this set does is it throws that system out of the game. If your opponent runs a set, no longer do you have control of your buffs. Your opponent does. So now you have access to your buff, to your debuffs, but your opponent has full access to their buffs and debuffs, but your buffs as well. So they have control of three of the aspects instead of the two that they had before. This is a huge power shift in combat dynamics, and it throws out fundamental combat balance in PvP. Now, this should be enough on its own, um, but I've been told multiple times that you know people on my channel like it when I do deeper dives uh, into different things, going into different mechanics and, and all sorts of stuff. And so that's what this video is. We are going to do a deeper dive uh, into this set. We're gonna get slightly more nerdy and I'm gonna explain the mechanics of this uh, and why I think it's busted and why I think it should be scrapped and, and overhauled. So number two, Let's look at what some of the major main buffs are. I, I'm not going to go into all of them. I'm just going to provide some examples and I'm going to explain why removing a major buff is so powerful. Um, first example, Major Resolve is a buff in this game. Increases your armor by 5948. This is a buff just about everyone runs in the game at this point in some way, shape or form. Since it's a, a buff on your bar, Nocturnal's Ploy can take it away from you if it is attached to any skill. It won't be removed from sets like Oakensole, like as long if it has a duration, like lasts for X amount of seconds, it can be taken away. Oakensole, it stays up. Uh, since we're running Nocturnals, and if we take away if we take away an armor buff, we can remove 5948 armor. Another way to look at this is penetration. So it's not a penetration set. It's not or it's not fracture. Fracture is reducing the enemy's armor, but Taking away the enemy's armor and reducing the enemy's armor is functionally the same thing, right? Like, you're causing them to not have 5948 armor with Major Fracture. You're also not, or it's like 5000 armor with Major Fracture. You're also causing them to not have 5948 armor with this set, okay? So it's, it's the same way, but it's not attached to a Major Buff. You can actually reduce it. So if I use Major Fracture, it's like having 11k pen because I'm attaching it to a skill and I'm taking away your buff and I'm applying my debuff. So uh, it's basically increasing the power of Major Fracture as an example. Um, but yeah, if you had a set that had 5948 pen as an example, it would be more powerful than every pen set in the game that currently exists as a five piece, except for Hue and Sunder. And Hue and Sunder is only more powerful if you hit with a heavy attack with five or more people within the same range. 
it has to impact five plus people for it to have more pen. This is just applying a debuff to one enemy. So this set will be more powerful than Titanborn. It'll be more powerful than Spriggans. It'll be more powerful than Twice Fang. It'll be more powerful than one of the best damage, flat damage sets in the game, Stun. Because Stun is like 5,033. This is 5,948. It's just better. Um, it's a huge boon to damage. So I've seen this a lot on the forums. I've seen a lot this discussed a lot. Uh, people will say, oh yeah, it's not a damage set. Guys, it's a damage set. You remove somebody's armor, you're going to do a lot more damage to them. It doesn't say like increase your weapon damage, but you're reducing their armor. It's it's like a pen set, okay? Let's let's <laughs> let's call a spade a spade and move on. However, it, it doesn't stop there. This isn't the only buff it removes. It also removes your potion buffs. Major Fortitude, Major Endurance, and Major Intellect are your recovery buffs attached to potions. They increase your health, stamina, and magic, magic recovery by 30% for the duration of the potion. So, if you are running Nocturnal's Ploy and your opponent pops a potion buff, you can remove 30% of their major recoveries for almost the entire duration of the potion. Since Nocturnal's Ploy operates on a six second, uh, two second cooldown, sorry, uh, and potions buffs after popping them last for 45 or 47 seconds. I can't remember the exact duration of potions. You could effectively take away all three major buffs from your opponent for the entire duration of their tripod, effectively negating them from the fight entirely until somebody in that fight dies. So if you pop a potion, you get these major buffs. Uh, you guys all know this. I'm not I'm speaking to the choir here. Uh, because this set has a two second cooldown, it means that if I apply a debuff to you every two seconds, after six seconds, all three of those major debuffs are removed and you go roughly 40 seconds uh, before you can pop a potion to get these recoveries back. It's not like you, it's not like many classes have the skill to get these major recoveries back. They have to build around it, right? Like a lot of classes, a lot of builds, like in PvP, PvE, whatever, we build around our recovery potion, a recovery aspect attached to our potions. Removing that from from somebody's character means that they have to build in 30% more sustain. So if you if this set goes live, literally everybody is going to go, okay, they, they should do this. They're gonna have to run a lot less damage because they have to build in the sustain that they're losing. So hypothetically, if you're building for 2000 recovery, with this set, you effectively have 1400. Whether it's 2000 magic recovery, I'm just throwing out an arbitrary number there. You guys can do your own math on it. But if you're building around 2000 recovery on a build, it's, this is a set is effectively putting you down to 1400 recovery. And so you have to build in another 600 to offset the fact that this is gonna be taken away from you. It's eliminating of a potion and so you're because nocturnal's ploy exists and because so many people are going to run it you'll have to build differently and people are going to run less damage in pvp to be able to actually sustain and survive <laughs> because because you have to be able to sustain and survive in order to to dish out any damage and so um yeah there's no counter there's no real counter to this it's not like you can just pop another potion you have to wait so, and this can take it away. So it's it's pretty toxic in that regard. And so not only does this set double down as one of the best damage sets via pen in the game, it also doubles down as a set that reduces somebody's recovery more than any other recovery reducing set in the game. This is already the strength of two five piece bonuses with just removing two buffs. And that's enough, you know, that can, that can happen every two seconds. If we remove these two buffs, we have the strength of two five piece sets. And, and I, I will explain the application of this in a little bit here so you guys can see exactly how problematic that is. Um, but that doesn't stop there, guys. Those aren't the only major buffs it removes. It also removes major sorcery, minor sorcery, major and minor brutality, which are your buffs to your weapon and spell damage. If your opponent casts Molten Armaments, Rally or Entropy, you can remove their major buff, which is 20% more weapon and spell damage. If you apply the minor, you remove their 10%. Um, since you're removing your opponent's ability to do more damage, Nocturnal's Ploy not only functions as one of the best damage sets, the best recovery reduction set, it also now triples down as a set that causes your opponent to do substantially less damage to you. Or in other words, it's a great mitigation set. How good? Let's dive into some PvP, let's dive into a single PvP build and show you an example.
So now I'm on the PTS. You're looking at this right now and, and I'm on a Magplar and I'm running a very traditional Magplar setup. You guys have seen it for the last few patches. We got back bar Olorime, front bar Clever Alchemist, Markin, and Magma Incarnate. Uh, this is a typical uh, Magplar setup in PVP because Olorime buffs you and your group. It gives you major courage. Uh, Magma Incarnate gives you your minor resolve and minor courage off of healing. And so you're purifying the ground, helps heal your buddies. And so you get that heal. It's a very, very nice synergy. Plus all of this goes together and gives us a lot of spell damage. And Templars do really well stacking spell damage with major and minor sorcery. And so that the more spell damage you have, the higher heals you are, you have the more damage you do. This is a very, very popular setup, but I'm explaining it to people that, that don't know these things. So this setup is typically run by at least one person in a group. Um, if you're solo, this is this was a very popular setup. Uh, you've probably ran this in the past or you're running it <laughs> if you're a Templar. Um, so. Uh, what I'm doing on this setup is I don't have any enchants on the front bar because I don't want to have like minor vulnerability or, or stuff attached to it. I don't want to get those sorts of things messed uh, confused with this, but I'm buffing all the sets. So I'm light attacking on my back bar to proc my resto staff weapon damage enchant. I'm keeping my rune on the ground to keep Olorime up because it can have 100% uptime as long as I'm in my rune. Uh, I procking my clever alchemist and then i'm also hitting my purifying light in order to get my minor sorcery purifying light procs the minor sorcery passive and then also i am running spell symmetry which doesn't make any sense when you look at it but in order to proc magma incarnate i have to heal myself and so i'm just reducing my health with that to proc magma incarnate to get my minor courage buff so that's just getting another 200 recover 200 uh weapon damage on top of all my other stuff so this is me trying to maximize out max me trying to maximize the amount of spell damage i have to hit as hard as possible against this test dummy now this isn't the most damage this is just eliminating all the other forms of of damage that exist right so it's eliminating the minor vulnerability and, and stuff like that uh so with just these sets and spell damage what you're gonna see is when I do this full test and I get to my maximum amount of weapon and, or what spell damage, it's 8380. I'm gonna hit a 6680 crit puncturing sweeps. So that's the hardest I can hit with the maximum amount of weapon damage that I have with the crit and everything. Obviously not taking into account other factors. I didn't put enchants on my gear. It doesn't matter. It's the same test for both, for both things. I wanted to show what happens when we remove major sorcery from the game. So that keep in mind 6680 is what we hit for our, our maxed out. Now, I was initially going to do this test and I was gonna show major sorcery removing 20%, but then I realized that Nocturnal's ploy absolutely just screws over this build because Magma Incarnate is your minor buffs. It's your minor courage and minor resolve and Olorim is your major courage. And so it can take away those three buffs also. So I wanted to do a test showing you guys how this set can remove sets from the game and sets that you want to run. It effectively negates sets on top of uh, major buffs as well. And so um, I'm gonna hit with all those sets not procking. So I'm still gonna light attack on my back bar for the back bar weapon enchant. I'm not gonna put a rune down or my purify down to proc Olorime because we don't have it anymore. It's taken away from us. Uh, Nocturnal's ploy has playfully taken away our major courage. Um, I'm not going to hit spell symmetry because it's also taken away our minor courage. And I'm not going to cast entropy because it's taken away our major sorcery. Now you guys may seem, it may seem like that's a lot. Oh man, like that's a lot of debuffs. Okay, well major courage, two seconds later, major sorcery, two seconds later, minor courage. Like after six seconds, all those are removed. So there's a good portion of the time where you're going to do substantially less damage if they're applying this every two seconds. And we'll get into the application in a minute. So with all those things taken away, how hard do we hit? Well, we hit 57 for 5703 crit sweeps with the same type of functionality, everything else. I kept minor sorcery on there. So this isn't the most extreme. Um, I figured minor sorcery because it's uh, attached to like purifying light. Uh, it, it'll be a little bit easier to keep up for a burst combination. And sometimes it will be removed, so it'll be more than this. I just wanted to explain that like, this isn't the most extreme example, but it is a more extreme example. And so when you look at it, you go, you can do a percentage change calculator. You can do it in your head um, or write it down or whatever, or you can go online and you can look up percentage change calculator. And oftentimes, you know, it eliminates 
uh, human error. And so I just like to use the calculator because frankly, like <laughs> I, I make less mistakes using a calculator. You, you should know the formula, but it is what it is. Uh, if you're, if you're a little shaky with math, there's nothing wrong with using a calculator guys. Like somebody with a big brain used a calculator before you can use a calculator. It's not a big deal. But if we input 6680 and 5703, the difference is, is about 14.6%. So almost 15% less damage. Meaning if somebody's running Nocturnal's ploy against this type of Magplar and they reduce these buffs, they're causing them to, to do 15% less damage. 15%. So it's almost the same as like a mitigation set. Like think about the mitigation sets that exist in the game. The new form of Iron Blood is now major and minor uh, protection, which is 15%. You have Buffer of the Swift, which is 10%. You have Major Protection, which is 10%. This is stronger than some major buffs. And so it doesn't look, it doesn't look like it's a debuffs, or like a, a mitigation set, but it is. Now this is obviously on the higher end. I wanna be clear, like, like not every class is running two sets that give you major buffs and minor buffs and, and stuff like that. Not everybody's running Olorime. You guys can go and like, you can you can copy this type of setup for your own specific builds and see how it impacts you. Uh, but my guess is your most builds will, will be impacted by roughly eight to 10%. Like it's roughly eight to 10% mitigation, which is around the same strength as a major buff, like major protection. So pretty, pretty impactful. So. Uh, that's just looking at three of the major buffs uh, that that are being removed. There's obviously a slew of other ones. I don't want to go too far into this into this video. Like we're already ten minutes in, <laughs> or seven. So, wow, we're already seventeen minutes into this video. So I don't want to go too much farther discussing this. This is three major buffs, and this set's already functioning functioning as the same strength as three different five piece bonuses. Like every two seconds so after six seconds this set has the functionality of three five piece bonuses does that make sense if we keep doing this and we keep going down this path this set gets stronger and stronger because we're constantly removing effects from our enemy it's extremely powerful extremely powerful now that's the thing though olorime isn't the only set in the game that gives buffs with a duration sets like danger trickery magma armor sea serpent's coil iron blood all can be eliminated by this set. So for number three, not only does this set function as one of the best offensive sets in the game, the best defensive sets in the game now, the best recovery elimination sets in the game, it also quadruples down on effectively making every format no CP because it has the ability to eliminate sets in the game in the way that no proc, no CP does. Obviously, like this is a little bit more free to, um, you can run a few more sets when somebody's running Nocturnal's Ploy, but not many, not many, because you're, I'm gonna provide a list. Uh, Mr. Stash from my Discord posted this on the forums. He posted a list of all of the sets that this, uh, that Nocturnal's Ploy can remove from your bar. And you ha have to wait off of cooldown to get them back. And keep in mind, I, I keep mentioning this, Nocturnal's Ploy has a two second cooldown. So to remove a major buff is two seconds, to remove two is four seconds, to remove three is six seconds. In order to deal with this type of debuff, you would have to constantly be buffing. And if you're constantly trying to buff skills in your bar, you're not doing any damage. <laughs> so so while you're trying to keep your buffs up and, and yes, they will stay up for a short amount of time, I'm removing them with just a debuff ability and we'll go into application here in a minute. Um, but yeah, cooldown cannot be slept on for how strong this is. That can be its own thing in a, by itself, but I don't want to go down the path of cooldown and, and leave hope that this set can be fixed with a longer cooldown. This set's broken. It, it's absolutely broken. 10 second, 20 second, 30 second cooldown. It goes against the mechanics of PvP. Um, so we have the strengths of the set down, like, like removing three major buffs. We know that removing three major buffs is the strength of three damage sets after a six second window. We know that it removes, uh, set pieces from the game also. Um, how easy is it to apply a debuff to an enemy? What's the cost? Maybe the cost is so high that this isn't that big of a deal. Well, elemental drain is free. Elemental Drain provides minor or major fracture or uh, major breach. Sorry, it provides major breach and uh, it's free to cast. Meaning that if you're fighting somebody 
Or you see somebody applying buffs, they put their rune down, you hit Ellie Drain. You see him pop a potion, you hit Ellie Drain. You see him hit with Entropy or Rally, you hit Ellie Drain. It, it's not hard to do, and all of those abilities that they're trying to apply cost resources, and yours do not. Uh, there's also cheap skills, like Pierce Armor. Pierce Armor is a little over a thousand. I want to say it's like 1300 cost. So it's going to be cheaper than most buffs that you try to apply to yourself. So while they try to do that, uh, you can debuff them with a cheaper skill. You're going to win the Battle of Attrition because your skill to apply is is better than their... It's cheaper than their skill to buff. On top of that, Pierce Armor also doubles as Minor Fracture. So you're removing a major and a minor buff with Pierce Armor. So um, it's not just major buffs like with Ellie Drain. And then there's other skills like Sub Assault have Major Fracture, um, Major and Minor Fracture, the, the Magicka Morph does. Um, skills that have Minor, uh, Minor Maim attached to it, like Heroic Slash, uh, those can remove buffs. If you, if you apply a debuff to an enemy in any way, shape, or form, there's obviously like a vulnerability monster set now. You, you doing all these things reduces somebody's buff on their bar. And it's really, they're really easy to come across. They're really easy to apply. And with the two second cooldown, it makes this just absolutely brutal to deal with. And so um, people are looking at it and they're like, oh yeah, you know, and, and it's, it's people lying, frankly. Like, like I've seen it a lot where they're like, oh, it's not that impactful to remove a set every, it doesn't happen that often. It does. When a, when a set breaks the game, people are going to run the set differently than what than how they used to. And so if I was running the set, and I will be, I'll be completely honest with you guys, if this set goes live, <coughs> it will be by far the strongest set in the game, and you should run it. I'm not saying like, oh, I'm going to run it and be toxic. It's the best set in the game. I'm already explaining how and why you should run it either on a front or back bar. And that's what you can do. You can run it on a front or back bar. It's fantastic. And it doubles, triples, quadruples down as all these different things. It's extremely effective. Uh, it's easy to apply. Like, why wouldn't you run this set, right? So all these different applications are good. Uh, but I saw uh, an example on my channel, and I, I wish I could cite the source, guys, but I can't remember who it was. Uh, the best example brought up was to use the Sigic spammable, to use Crushing Weapon which is the stamina morph of the Sigic spammable, that applies my major fracture on a spammable. And then you can run a charged weapon with a shock glyph to proc minor vulnerability. So while you're using your spammable, you know, which you're going to hit regularly in your combination, it will just naturally apply Nocturnal's ploy to who you're fighting. That is so extremely powerful. It's better than my Ellie Drain idea. It's better than any other idea. It is, and it's not mine. <laughs> um, I'm sure that in the future, somebody will come up with a better way to apply these types of debuffs, but that is so extremely powerful to apply it to a, a spammable, like crushing weapon. And so think about how combat's going to function, right? Like if you and I are fighting and I have Nocturnal's ploy on, you apply your buffs, you come in to hit me, and I'm just, you know, I, I apply my buffs and I come to hit you. While I'm hitting my spammable to apply pressure, I'm removing your deep, your buffs on your bar. And so then you have to go on your back bar. If you decide like, oh man, he just took away my, my major resolve, I gotta go reapply it. I'm still applying pressure. I now have you on your back bar and you're now using skills that are more expensive than my offensive skills. Offensive skills are typically a lot cheaper than defensive skills. And so while you're trying to apply your buffs and stay buffed up and trying to protect yourself, I'm taking them away. And then you have to pop a potion because you're running out of resources because it costs more resources for you to sustain and survive, right? You pop a potion, I take away those debuffs too. And so now you're naturally taking, you're, you're not getting 30% more recovery on top of it. And so you're expending more resources to try and keep these buffs up that I'm just taking away via my burst combinations. That's what this is going to do. It just naturally applies into combat. It naturally amplifies my killing power because I'm reducing your, your major armor buff. I'm taking away your recoveries, not allowing you to sustain well. I'm taking away your major brutality or major sorcery, so you're not going to be able to heal as well. You're not going to be able to mitigate as much damage. You're not going to be able to recover as much. And I'm just, I'm just there being tankier, dishing out more damage and taking less damage, allowing me to stay on my front bar longer to apply more and more pressure to you. That's how this set functions. 
Now, who does this impact? Well, everyone. Uh, but before we dive into that, let's talk about uh, combat. Because I missed one. <laughs> the set fundamentally goes against how you teach new players. Zenimax is trying to lower the delta of effectiveness in PvE this patch by making rotations easier for new players to learn. It's not going well for them so far in week one, but this is their goal. Their goal is to try and help new players to try and uh, um, make the amount of um, content in the game more accessible to more people. And and yeah, I, I understand the point of training new players. That's what that's what this channel is about. And that's why I'm doing this video. But imagine being a new player wanting to try out pvp and you're you talk to somebody and they show you a buff debuff system burst combinations for your class or you watch a youtube video whatever you're already at a disadvantage you didn't experience you haven't pvp uh you're possibly at lower cp or you know you're at high cp whatever or you have different gear but but for a multitude of reasons you're probably already at a disadvantage because you just don't know how to play pvp but now you're going to be at an even greater disadvantage when you constantly have to monitor the buffs being removed from your bar faster than you thought. Um, you know how Zenimax wrote that they wanted uh, to make rotations easy to do so you didn't have to monitor them on a buff tracker and enjoy the game? Like they wanted you to be in the moment and actually watch how the combat was playing out and not constantly be monitoring buffs and debuffs? This set is the antithesis of that for PvP. It goes against that entirely. So if you're a player and you run across this and you see a, a buff removed, you have to identify what buff was removed from you and then decide whether or not you can apply it or you can reapply it if you should reapply it or if it's just gone like your major potion recoveries and you have to wait for your next potion passive. That is an extreme um, version like that. That doesn't really exist right now. And, and now you're going to make it be a thing. And it's going to impact newer players a lot more seriously than it will impact vets. Like, like the set strength and functionality is one thing. Uh, I've, I've already kind of done the math in my head. And like, if somebody's running Nocturnals and they're constantly applying it, you just basically have to sacrifice your buffs. Like whatever buffs you have, just sacrifice and move it on. Um, but players wanting to actually like play the game and use core mechanics and everything, this throws core mechanics out. Screw it. Like that's that's how powerful this is and another reason why it shouldn't exist in the game impact who does it affect it's going to affect everybody some people have this belief that it only impacts solo players or small scale players and depending on who you are you may be like oh yeah screw small solo small scale players or you know or, if, or on the other end if you are one you're gonna be like oh man like why are you impacting me so badly like why are you making a set that impacts only me this isn't the case guys like i'm not stating this uh, this will be felt everywhere. If you're dueling in a 1v1 and somebody's running Nocturnal's Ploy, you will feel this set. If you're in Battlegrounds and you're fighting 4v4v4, if a four-man group is running Nocturnal's Ploy, you will feel the effectiveness of this set. If you're running 8v8s, 12v12s, like any sort of fight where, where both sides can fight back at each other, this set is going to be so extremely powerful. Keep battles, whatever. Like as long as both sides are fighting and they're impacting each other with spammables and debuffs and stuff, people will feel the impact of this set and it is so extremely broken. The only time, the only time in PvP will you, where you will not feel the impact of this set is if you're like 20v5ing a group and you're dealing so much damage already that they can never go offensive. Like, you have such overwhelming numbers, you're going to win the fight anyway, and they just can't get buffs on their bar because there's only five of them and there's 20 of you. That's the only time in PvP where, where you will not feel this impact in a large group. If you fight 20v10 and they got a couple coordinated healers and the fight's going to last a while, you will feel the impact of the set because it's going to go after uh, high priority targets. And so the first thing they're going to do is they're going to use this to target healers. And I personally, I've talked about some healing. I do think some aspects of, of healing need an adjustment, but you should go after the skills and not just introduce a set that absolutely screws over 
how a healer functions. Like think about uh, what your healer is, what buffs you have, and how if some a few people are running Nocturnal's ploy, they are going to strip you of your major sorcery, your major mending, your major vitality, your, your armor buff, your potion buffs. They're gonna take all of this away from you. And it's not to any fault of your own. You could be the best healer in the game. You could be the best healer in the game, but now you are just completely clipped. Your wings are clipped in effectiveness, not because the opponent played better than you, but because they're running a set. And that's not how PvP should function. They should be able to kill you because they set up a, a burst combination of ultimates and different timers to, to 100 to zero you because you're a high priority target. The game should be adjusted so that some of the smart healing that they've already reduced for this next batch, like Radiant Regeneration, isn't as impactful. Um, they should be going after stuff like that, not introducing a set that's going to cause you to heal for less, causing your sustain to not function as well, causing you to take a lot more damage because your armor buffs removed. Just as an example, like, like it just absolutely removes what you can do. And if you have one or two people on you and you're a, you're a healer in those sorts of situations, you're basically just going to be, a uh, a clipped version of yourself. You're just not going to be nearly as effective. If you're going to try and keep your buffs on your bar, they're going to go off as fast as you apply them. And so you're just, you're just not as effective for really no reason because a broken set is introduced into PvP. Like, and so this isn't impacting solo small scale players, guys. This will impact everybody. We we have to get past the fact that, you know, this targets a specific group and we hate this group. No, like I'm telling you right now, people will run this everywhere. And the only time you will not encounter uh, this specific set is in fights you're already winning. In fights you're already winning, you will not encounter this set. So what's the effect? Like, why Why is this beneficial? Why should this be in PvP? It shouldn't, in my opinion. Um, so, in summation, I'm going to say it again. We have one of the best offensive sets in the game. One of the best mitigation sets in the game. One of the best recovery debuff sets. As well as... Uh, the ability to remove other sets with major buffs and, and just other major buffs in the game. Uh, and it removes all these things with a two second cooldown and a proc condition that is slapped on a cheap or no cost ability that's already accessible in every PvP build in the game. You can slap it on a spammable, you can slap it on a cheap debuff. This will be really, really easy to apply and reapply. Uh, this will impact everyone fighting in a relatively even fight in PvP from open serial keep battles. Everyone will, uh, battlegrounds, dueling, dueling, whatever. Everyone will feel the impact of this set and it will absolutely ruin the new player experience in PvP. This set will destroy the ability for you to defend yourself. This impacts combat in a way very rarely seen. And it is once again, ex once again, it is an extremely loaded five piece. This has the strength of multiple different five piece bonuses. For every major buff you remove, it's the strength of a five piece set. And every two seconds, you're going to amplify that strength. So as this goes on, this is going to be just stronger and stronger and stronger. It's so incredibly powerful. It's it's tough to quantify, but this is stronger than any other five piece in the game. It, it just is. Um, and that for that reason, it's the strongest set in the game if it goes live the way it currently is. And it shouldn't exist. Like the set needs to be reworked entirely. I get the idea. I get the idea that there's a lot of sets that exist in the game and this is a different type of uh, effectiveness, but this is breaking mechanics effectiveness. It's just, I would, I would look at something different. Now, in this video, as you guys have been able to tell, like we're 33 minutes in, I'm not pulling any punches. Um, I'm not trying to, like this isn't, this isn't a, a debate where there's like two sides of an argument. I, it's been on uh, the forums for the last week now. It's been debated on the forums. And the only um, argument I've seen from people supporting this are, number one, just outright lies, stating that it's not an offensive set. It is. Uh, I've explained how it is an offensive set. Uh, how it doesn't apply that often. It does. Like, if you attach it to a spammable, it does. Uh, if you don't attach it to a spamble, you should be applying debuffs every time you see your opponent apply a buff because you're bit effectively amplifying your sets by a five-piece bonus every time you do it. 
Like that's that's how powerful this is. If you see them apply a buff, if you see them pop a potion, you should be applying a debuff. You should be slowing down combat on your end to make sure that they don't have those things because it's more effective for you. And you will just slowly wear on them and you will win the fight if you're relatively equal skill. Um, yeah. That's, that's one of the arguments is just outright lies or misunderstanding of how the set functions. Uh, the other form is just ad hominem attacks and other forms of fallacies uh, where you, instead of debating the power or non-power of the set, you decide to attack the person and state that they have um, nefarious reasons for why they want the set removed. And so the argument that I've seen is, oh, you're a solo player. You just don't want to be hurt in PvP. You want to be a god. That has no bearing on the strength of the set at all like at all i've gone 30 minutes into this video explaining the strength what removing these things does how that quantifies into value how this is more powerful than other five piece bonuses we need to quit looking i'm gonna hop on a soapbox here we need to quit looking at sets and how they impact a specific group whether it's ball groups solo small scalers zergs whatever that's not how this game functions period end of sentence done we Every time a set is introduced to impact a specific group, it doesn't work that way. We're in a sandbox game. Smart players will run the best sets. They will figure this stuff out. They will run it better than you. That's how it functions. That's how it's always functioned. Every time a broken thing is introduced in PvP, you always get a group of people that want it. They want to run it. They want to abuse it. And then all of a sudden, they realize that everybody else can do the exact same thing. And then they go to the forums and it gets adjusted anyways. So how about this time, instead of going through that entire situation, going through the rat race of, of debating a set that's clearly broken for weeks, to have it go live, to be proven that it's broken on live, how about it's just adjusted during the patch, during the patch notes? How about, how about it gets adjusted now and we go this route instead and just recognize the fact that this will impact everybody in PvP. This will impact everybody. This isn't a solo small scale targeting set. It's not going to function that way. It's not. It's going to impact everybody. This is going to be a battleground set. This is going to be a dueling set. This is going to be a solo outnumbered set. I'm going to run this on my setup too because it is that powerful. Like it is effective for everybody. So if you're going to remove my buffs and debuffs, I'm going to remove them from you as well. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I run this set? Like it's that powerful. So um, I would love to see an actual argument where somebody would do some work even close to what I've done here, weighing and quantifying value and trying to show how powerful this set is. But I don't think that argument's out there. I mean, this set's been out for a week. I haven't seen a good tangible reason for why this should exist. All, like I said, all I've seen are people lying about the set and misstating uh, somebody else's intentions. And so the other thing I'm gonna say is oftentimes when people use like ad hominem attacks and they say, you only want this so you can be powerful. You only want this set so that you can be powerful and you can wipe the floor with these types of players. That typically is projection where uh, somebody puts their own insecurities and thoughts into their accusation and they're saying they're accusing somebody else of doing something that they want to do themselves. And so you're going to see this argument in this comment section like this, this uh, set. And it's always these quote unquote weak sets, right? It's always these weak sets that get this fierce debate. It's never an actual weak set like Adept Rider. Like, like nobody has ever had an in-depth discussion on, on Adept Rider. It's always these sets that are clearly busted, but all of a sudden you have a large portion of the community stating that it's not busted and it should stay the way it is and they're, they're staunchly defending a set that's not even that good. Nobody defends a set that's not that good, guys. Nobody does. It doesn't exist. You defend a set and you try and say it's not that good so it goes live. Let's just cut with the nonsense. If you think you have a good explanation, if you think you actually have numbers or, or how this quantifies and it's not as strong as what I'm saying, feel free. Feel free to post it and share it. I would love to see that argument, but it doesn't exist from what I've seen so far. And so if it does, and if I'm wrong, I will make an apology video. I will eat my own shoe. I will say that I'm wrong here, but I, I don't 
think that I am, and I haven't seen a case to prove that I am. And until then, I'm going to just stand that this set's broken for all the reasons I mentioned. Uh, it has a strength of multiple five piece sets. It ruins core combat. It impacts the new player experience, which is not what ESO wants to have happen. All these sorts of things is what these this this specific set does. But but yeah, that's not strong at all, right, guys? Like like not a strong set at all. Let it go live. We'll just nerf it in three months, anyways. What's the point? It's the end of my video, guys. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.